Welcome back to the bookcast. I am D.L. White, author of romantic fiction featuring black men and women. I have been using the bookcast to share snippets and shorts from not only my holiday novellas, which are available on Amazon, but my upcoming black rom-com called The Never List. If you're interested in this book, it is up at uh, Goodreads. You can add that to your to-be-read list. I do not yet have a release date for this book. Uh, Y'all know what I say, it's done when it's done, and it's not done yet. I'm done writing it, and I've gone through my edits. It's currently in uh, editing and proofreading, and once I get that copy back, I'll have an idea of how long it will take me to apply those edits and format the book, and then I will put it up for pre-sale. This book will not be available on Kindle Unlimited. It will be available wide, so you can have it on Amazon Kindle, Barnes & Noble Nook, your Kobo device, or any Apple device that you use to read books. Or I guess Apple Books has an app too. Probably not on Google Play, um, and I will also submit it to libraries and such so you can request to read this via ebook um, on your life, uh, via your library. I cannot speak. You'll also be able to listen to this book via audio on the bookcast. I plan to record in batches of about three to four chapters. I'm aiming for 10 sessions of reading this book for the bookcast. It's just an idea um, that I've been rolling around and I'm seeing a couple of authors do it really well and now I want to play. So I will be recording this book for the bookcast. If you don't want to listen to the bookcast, uh, you will be welcome to order this book um, in ebook and then read at your leisure. So today I'm here to read you a little snip this is already on my blog, so if you'd rather read it than listen to it, have at it. It's booksbydlwhite.com slash blog, and all of my snips and shorts are there. Basically, that's my base of operations. If you need something from me, it's likely on my website, and so uh, go there. If you need anything, you can always drop me a line. It's authordl at booksbydlwhite.com. When I do have a release date, for this book, I will send it out to my newsletter first. So if you want that first drip of information, if you want the early bird news, if you want to be on the VIP, very special people to me list, you'll hop on that. It's booksbydlwhite.com slash newsletter. Um, throw your name and email address in there. I do not sell email addresses. I do not even know how to sell email addresses. It ain't going nowhere. I will strictly use it to communicate with you about books. So let me read this snip so I can get back to reading and editing and such. You're still not going to tell me all the stuff on the list, are you? I bobbed my head side to side, pretending to think it over. Nah, still more fun for you to not know yet. I need to ask you an inappropriate question about your list, given our working relationship. I inhaled, wondering if he was going to ask again if sex was on the list, and if I was going to tell him that it was. Given our recent agreement to exchange favors for contract concessions, I said, I don't think I have room to complain about inappropriate questions. I bet. He paused, making sure I was hanging on every word before he spoke again. So... Is having a man kiss the shit out of you in a parking garage on your list? Because if it's not, we might need to add it. The thought of kissing him again brought a band of heat that flushed through my body. I didn't think about it or argue against it or tell myself that this was not a date. In a few steps, I crossed the short span of distance between us, gripped the back of his neck, and relished in the feeling of him clutching my hips to pull me to him, angling his head slightly to the right as our lips met. He growled low, slipping his tongue between my lips. Unlike the kiss before, it was sensual and slow, more intimate and intoxicating than a fevered, passionate smashing of our mouths together. With a groan and then a short exhale, Trey released my body and my lips. I swiped a hand across his mouth, frowning at the film of gloss. I thought women wore that pink stuff that doesn't come off when you kiss. I wore that earlier. 
I should have kissed you on the Ferris wheel like I wanted to. You wanted to? Woman? Trey let out a little chuckle, then reached up to scratch his neck while giving me a squinty smile. I've wanted to kiss you since I asked if I could take your chair, and you damn near cussed me out. I did not. I said damn near. You almost called me everything but a child of God, as my mother would say. My cousin said you were flirting with me. Your cousin is right, but... He shrugged, then balled one hand into a fist and punched it into the other flat palm. I got what I deserved. I was rude. I hope I have more than made up for that. I nodded. I was rude as well. I gestured to the arousal that had to be embarrassing, but he was calm about it. And I know I've made up for that. He stepped around me and reached for my driver's side door. I unlocked it. He pulled the handle and held the door open. You need to get into your car and drive away. Bad decisions are about to be made. Amen, I agreed in my head. I slipped into the driver's seat and waited until he firmly pushed the door shut before I pressed the start button and the car purred to life. The seat belt automatically moved to enclose me in the car. I reached for the gear shift and put the car in reverse, then backed out of the spot while Trey stood a few feet away, watching me pull out. I watched him wave from the rearview mirror. I waved back and headed to the exit. My body was on fire, but not from the alcohol. My mind flashed memories of the day, the evening, the kiss, and then the other kiss. Somehow, I was supposed to get up the next morning and sit in that little room and look Trey Pettigrew in the eye and pretend that my vibrator didn't get a workout as soon as I got home. And that I was no longer trying to pretend that I wasn't thinking about Trey. I sincerely hope you enjoyed that little snip. I enjoyed writing it. Um, This is the part of the book that I like where the attraction between the main characters is so completely obvious and now it's just a dance of when are we going to get down? (laughs) So most of me writing is just y'all just need to stop talking and just do it already. And so that was a really fun part to write and I hope it will be a fun part to read, a fun part to listen to once you get the entire book. And so I'm going back to work on that, and I hope that I will be speaking to you soon. Hopefully the next time you hear my voice, it will be chapter one of The Neverlist for the book cast. Until then, take care of yourselves. Thank you.